if you live in Nigeria um, and you are fighting against the government, uh, that government is not doing chain analysis right now. Like, you know, now it may in the future, but right now they're not. So whereas they could use their surveillance power to understand that you were accepting donations last year for the protests against the police brutality, and they were able to use that information to shut down your bank accounts and fintech accounts. That's just QED. Okay. They could not figure out what you're doing with Bitcoin and they could not figure out their bank accounts. So uh, the feminist coalition set up a BTC pay server. The government had no clue what was going on. I don't even think they know what BTC pay server is, but let's say even they do, if they did, they weren't in a position to be, be sophisticated enough to de-anonymize what was happening. And that's what we call kind of practical here in the now privacy. So I think it's really important to distinguish these two things. There is ideal and theory, and then there is practice. And, you know, look, over time, I do agree that governments will get better and better and better at, at, at sort of exploiting any vulnerabilities here. But just the very fact that Bitcoin is this parallel system that does not uniquely, rather that does not natively uh, have your ID stack in it is a huge advantage for human rights activists.